excited to have you all here in person. Thank you. It was an easy trip to come down from McNally for everybody joining us virtually. We're very, very excited to welcome you. I love giving the community session. My first job at Fordham was working with our community students. It's something that I'm very proud of in the Office for Student Involvement, which how computer centric we are in a variety of different ways. I would say many universities will say that they have sometimes some struggle to get commuting students involved. Here at the Lincoln Center campus, I have more student leaders that are commuters than I do residents. We try to have the infrastructure here so that your experience is allowed to be both vibrant in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So I just want to start with that by saying that that is something I'm excited to emphasize for you today. And so that as you get transitioning, sometimes your first semester, there can be ups and downs as you get adjusted to your you start of the school year. And that's fine. This is cool. have, like the system here is organized. I hear you laugh. Succeed as a commuting as a commuting student and to be fully involved in campus. We'll have some slides of things to share, and then we will have an open forum for, for questions and answers for both families here, students here in the room, and then the orientation leaders will help me with computer, computer questions from our virtual participants. <laughs> computer student services is, uh, is what our office provides for helping to enhance your commuter life on campus. We work hard to develop a sense of community amongst our community students to make sure our commuting students, our resident students, are getting to know each other. We advise the Commuting Students Association in my office, which is our student government for commuting students. And then we also supervise the commuter first year mentoring program. Where do our commuting students, commuting students come from? All over. Every borough. Jersey, Nassau County, Suffolk County. Sometimes I have some people commuting in from Connecticut, which is a longer commute, Westchester. So students are coming from all different places in the city. We will have our commuter barbecue coming up on Monday, August 9th. That is for all of our community students to come back to campus that day and get to know one another. And we have chances to meet each other, both as commuting first year students. And then we also divide you up by where you're commuting from. So hopefully you can meet a couple people that are also a similar borough, similar commute from Jersey in to get to know one another. About half of our student population here are commuting students. The entering class is about 40% commuter students. But then as you factor in, sometimes our resident students don't stay in housing in all four years. So the undergraduate first year through senior year, about 50% are commuting to campus. I emphasize that because I think that is why we have the infrastructure here that makes it so easy for a commuting student to get involved. Every student club wants to make sure that they're hosting events, having meetings at times where half of the student population can also be an active member of the student club organization. And I already emphasized how we have more student leaders that are commuting. All right, I want to talk to you about some of the resources and programs that we offer. Do you know how to, you must stop having the top bar for you to share. Click more. Ah, thank you. High, high floating room control. High floating room control. Thank you. student leaders who are going to be the upper class mentors for all of our first year students. I know we might both virtually and in the room have some transfer students in the, in the room. Can I see a raise of hand for those transfer students? Okay. So there's still a lot of opportunities to be involved um, as well. And our community students association <coughs> I'm going to talk about next is a big resource for our transfer students. But every first year brand new college student, whether you're a resident or a commuter, gets assigned an upper class student leader. Another thing I'm proud of that is an upper class student leader that's trained by our office. They're the commuter first year mentors, and they are your resource 
all year. So they'll be reaching out to you in the next couple of weeks. They are another person in addition to your orientation leader, which should hopefully be reaching out next week. Those are upper class student leaders that will help you navigate Florida. Your mentors, we've expanded the mentor numbers because of how huge the first year commuting population is. So we usually only have eight mentors. The group's going to be too big. So we now have 10 mentors and they are so excited. They were here last week trying to get ready for the barbecue coming up. Um, and they are so, they all just kept saying, I can't wait to be back in person, to not just be on Zoom and getting to know you. And so there are resources from both office hours on campus where you can text, email, and they'll help you guide you to the right place. I would say sometimes a new student might feel more comfortable asking upper class student leader, and then that upper class student leader will get you to the right office. That is not meant to say, don't go to that office and ask a question, but there's another person who maybe after office hours will be able to respond to you. Can I talk a little bit about Sure. Let's see, I don't, I don't know how to raise the bar, so let me get closer to the microphone. Okay, so the upper class student leader, upper class student leaders, the mentors, we've hired 10 for this year. They will offer office hours down here on the garden level, as well as um, reaching out to you each week. And there, it's not a required program, but I encourage you to respond back to your mentor because they are a great resource all through your first year. You can follow them on Instagram. Our Canadian Students Association is our upper class student government for all four years, Canadian student government. And they are a group that does social programs. In addition, they advocate for policy items on campus for things they think commuters need. They work very collaboratively with our United Student Government. So here at Lincoln Center, we have three student governments. United Student Government, that's for everybody who's an undergraduate student, then our Commuting Students Association, which represents specifically community student needs, and our Residence Hall Association, that represents specifically resident student needs. So they are excited to bring back in-person events and start coming to campus as well. I'm not sure when their meetings are going to start, but they generally meet on Thursdays at 1130. So Thursdays is a really important day to try to come, come to campus. Additional services, we offer locker rentals over in the Lowenstein Academic Building, which is, you enter on 16th Street in Columbus. Most of the floors in that building have lockers available. We will launch locker rentals for all, com all community students in mid-August. You can register online for your locker, and then when you come to orientation or the first days of classes, we will help you get, get your locker number and get yourself separated, situated. Excuse me. The locker is narrow, but it's enough to be able to hang your coat and store a couple of things, and then there's like a top shelf section where you can put books. I encourage you to think about doing it, because then you can figure out which books you need to bring home with you that, that night for your next assignments coming in, and you can kind of leave things here and you're not carrying your coat around in winter weather time. But it's not required to get a locker. You could try it for a semester, and then if you like it, expand it to the next semester. Many of our new first year students will just get it for the full academic year, rent it once. You need to provide your own lock. Should be a sturdy lock not a little travel luggage lock. And that way you have your own lock, you know your own combination, and that is yours, your space on campus to leave something like this. We have quite a few commuter friendly places. For those of you who were here in person, the last bullet, which is the garden lounge, is very popular here, right by Argo T. Over in Lowenstein, we have the student lounge in the back of the cafeteria, Grand Cafe, back for that. Uh. There's a third floor study lounge for more quiet type studying. Quinn Library has three floors. The first floor is more open seating. You can sit with a group, you can talk with somebody. It's in a commons collaborative area. The second floor is a little bit quieter. The third floor is the really quiet floor. So I emphasize that because as a community student, you've got options of where to go on campus. Our office for student involvement. We have 61 undergraduate clubs, many, many club leaders, 
our community students. Every four, every club has about four to five student leaders that are on their executive board, and then they host meetings. Some clubs host weekly meetings. Some clubs host every other week meetings. It depends on the student club or organization. Many of our clubs will meet on Thursdays. So Thursday tends to be a highly trafficked day for club, club meetings. My office is also responsible for new student orientation, virtual in-person for you all today. We also provide alcohol and other drug education to all undergraduate students. We help provide our BLC peer mentors for wellness, and we provide leadership development programming. You're welcome to follow us on Instagram. <coughs> Every office on campus is open to all students. So I always emphasize this at a community session, but sometimes a student will say, well, is health services for me? I have my home doctor. Health services is also for you. You can still keep any home care you might have, but all of the services on campus are also open to you. This floor here where we are in the bottom level of the 140 West building has my office down the hall. It's a great place for those you're virtual, come down to ROT, and all of these, many of these offices are here. Counseling and psychological services is down the hall, health services is down the hall, career services, multicultural affairs, our disability services office, campus ministry, Center for Community Engaged Learning, they're over at Lowenstein. Campus ministry, the Center for Community Engaged Learning, Global Outreach, share one suite on the second floor of Lowenstein. And um, disability services up on the fourth floor. But every office is open for all of our students to come and swing by. I want to emphasize my office, which I don't have here. We're just down the hall here in the 140 West Building, just down from Argo T. Feel free as a community student just to stop by. If it's not our office, we'll help get you to the right office. There's no question that is too small for the type of student coming out. Fairly certain that's not your office, but I don't know where to go. We're the right office to come to if you don't know where else to go, and we'll help get you there. So think about coming over and seeing us. Some tips for commuting. It'd be helpful now in the next couple of weeks to look at your schedule. How many days a week are you coming to campus? Some of our upper class student leaders last year who were coming to campus started to opt in for the Omni cell phone screening on, um, on at the MTA. Other students are saying when they come back more consistently each week that it's still more cost effective to get a weekly unlimited Metro card or a monthly Metro card. It really depends on how many days a week you're coming to campus. Some of our students from Jersey might not even get a monthly Metro card or a weekly. Depending on the weather, they sometimes just walk up from 42nd Street if they're taking the train or from Penn Station. Every student is a little bit different. But in the summer, look, look through and see what your options are. New Jersey Transit does offer some discounts. You can contact our office in baldmountsea.fordham.edu for details, but the MTA does not offer discounts. That's why I always suggest that you look at how many times you're coming to campus because the only discount is if you're coming enough to get a week there or month. Yes. There's no talk of a Long Island Metro either. No, or the Metro, or the Metro does not provide everything under the MTA does not provide a discount. That is something that student governments in New York City have been trying to collaborate on off and on over the years to advocate for that, but that there is no there is no discount. One of the things that I would mention here then is that we try to look at commuting students get the Metro grant on their tuition bill. So depending on your, your scholarship money, if you don't have as much scholarship money, you do get a grant. And that we're hoping will help offset some of your, your commuting costs because we can't uh, get these other organizations to necessarily help. I would encourage you to think about as you're starting your school year, Who's your professor on your first professor of the day? You don't have to do it your first day of classes, but in the first couple of weeks, if they haven't asked who's a resident to commuter, find a way to just mention, hi, I commute, I commute from here, so that if you have a train delay or a signal problem, 
or a reason you didn't make it on time, when you reach out to them at the end of the class and you showed up late, they already have a sense from you that you're the first, they're the first professor for your schedule that day and that you are commuting. I would say our faculty are usually pretty understanding because they're also commuting to campus, but every faculty member has is allowed to have different rules for their policies for their, their classes. So make sure you're looking at this, the syllabus so that you know you get stuck and you might miss a class entirely. There's generally outlines and you and excused absences, excused absences as a threshold. Generally, that doesn't happen with our community students. Generally, I just say, make sure you, you've told the faculty member so that if you're running a little bit late, they understand and they, they know that you might show up a couple minutes late. Hopefully that'll happen very, very infrequently. Think about using the different websites and apps for service related changes. Those of you, who's the belly student in this room? Father Vin registers here. He tries to keep in mind having community students come to campus for first year. FCLC students, you registered yourselves. Perfect, wonderful. If you scheduled yourself for an 8.30 class or Father Vin scheduled you for an 8.30 or a 10 o'clock class, you're already going to be here for your, the Thursday activity block, which is my last bullet on the screen. The Thursday activity block is the time when many of the clubs host their meetings. Not every club. Some clubs choose to meet on a weekday at five o'clock, but many of our clubs will meet during that Thursday activity block. If you've only signed up for a Thursday class that starts at 2.30 or four o'clock, I encourage you to think about looking at your schedule to try to come earlier. Community Students Association will meet at 11.30, <coughs> And then each club picks their own meeting time. My office tries to, they all, some clubs will have multiple club meetings at one o'clock, but we try not to have every club meet at the same time. We try to spread them out through that activity block. And there's usually events on campus, not every Thursday, but many Thursdays. The first Thursday of the semester, we're gonna host a commuter specific brunch, welcoming back all of our commuting students every class year to be able to, Third week of the semester, we're running a big carnival outside for our fall festival. So if you could keep in mind coming, coming to campus on Thursdays. As you go through this semester, please take note like what's working, what's not working. There is no one correct way to be a commuting student here. It is very individualized. Some students want to be here five days a week, other students have a very long commute and want to try to get here before. Three days a week, I would say for your first couple of years here, that is really hard to manage given everything you do on the exact same day, back to back. Some students, let's say most students don't put more than two classes back to back together. Occasionally, they have no choice and have to get to a third. But other students want to come at 8.30 and then not have their next class until 2.30 because they study better here and they want that big gap in between so that they can do all of their prep class work. Every student is individualized on what works best for them. So please be mindful this semester, what's working, what's not working. Your first year mentor will be a resource to you to help you think about that as well. And then you register for classes in November for the spring semester. Now, we always encourage commuting students, every student actually, to have an A, B, C schedule so that when you log in, you have options for which classes are still available, how to register for them. But seeing what works now by midterms and mid-October, what's working, what's not working, so that you can make the adjustment that will work for you for the spring semester. It's hard when you register in June, you haven't had to commute here to, to know. Um, and for each student, it's going to be going to be different. These are some tips that our upper class student leaders have given us over the years. Now we're coming out of the pandemic, so the city's going to be new and different for all of us. And so please come to campus. The community upper class community student before the pandemic said, now always come, willing to explore because there's always new things happening. Uh, share your knowledge uh, about city life, but also come as an explorer. As you 
you can imagine, I want you to consider coming to on campus events. It's a really wonderful way to meet people. Every student club should be doing introductions on the first meeting of the semester. Maybe you missed the first meeting, you come into the second meeting. That's okay. Come in, introduce yourself to the person next to you, introduce yourself to the student leader running the meeting. Student organizations are a wonderful way to meet people outside of your, your classes. Every club, we will host a club fair the second week of classes where you can sign up to be part of clubs. Our RAMS involved platform, which is not, you're not loaded yet into that platform, but it's an online platform where you can click the clubs that you would like to get on the email list for. They will email you when their meetings are happening. Some clubs will start meeting the second, third week of September, other clubs. Many of our club leaders who were virtual all last year might take them until later September before they feel ready to lead a student meeting. So feel free to start signing up and then go to a couple. Figure out where is your home? Where is the place that you, you're arriving with that you feel like you're meeting people? And if the first one maybe wasn't the right fit, look for a second one, look for a third one. And all of the student leaders are going to be excited to welcome, welcome people back and help have students get to know each other. Our upper class student leaders always say, celebrate the wins. Sometimes your day might start out with not the commute you wanted, or you might get home and that's not the commute you wanted. But each day there should hopefully be something that's going smoothly for you. And so sometimes it's really helpful to think about, okay, that was not the experience I wanted to have to start my day, but yet my, then the, my first class went really well, or I knew where to go study on campus. And to have some grace for yourself in those first few weeks as you're adjusting to college life and you're adjusting to commuting life that you'll get into a rhythm. I promise you, you will get into a rhythm and you'll figure out what works for you. Taking advantage of your downtime. This is also very individualized. Some students will tell me they want to download their Netflix for their commute, listen to Spotify, zone out, other students will say that hour on the bus or on the Long Island Railroad is the time I can actually get my reading done. Every student is going to be different. And so in your first semester, start to figure out what works best for you because there is no one best answer. Some students want to do all their studying on campus. Other students will say, I need to get home. I can't study on campus. My rhythm is studying. So the best decision is what's going to work best for you. And you'll discover that over the first semester here. For our family members in the room, family members who are virtual, the summertime now is also a good time to think about what are some of the expectations. Every commuting student has, who is commuting home to live with family. Some of our commuting students are not. Some of them are, are living with extended family members. What are the expectations for being home? Sometimes students will live in multi-generational households and they'll have a responsibility on certain days to be home to pick up a younger sibling from somewhere or help a grandparent for some, somewhere. Every family is going to be different. The conversations happening this summer to make sure the student knows what the expectations are. And I would ask my family guests here and virtual to also, if you can, provide some leeway. Because sometimes you get to campus and you think you're going to leave at five o'clock and you're going to be home and then you realize there's an event tonight. Or somebody in class said, are you going to that event? Or your small group is going to say, or class aside, oh, you're here today. Can we just, can we get dinner and just sit somewhere down here at the ROT and lounge and just work on that project together? So sometimes one's schedule isn't as linear as when you were in the classroom and then therefore right afterwards, you're, you're going right home. Uh, sometimes you need to because of expectations or other things going on in your personal life, but also asking if there's flexibility to have that because that's the college experience to stumble upon something that you didn't know was going to happen and to be able to participate <coughs> if you can. Please consider utilizing all of our resources. We've already talked about our Commuting Students Association, Student Government, our Commuter First Year Mentors, the Orientation Leaders, all of the offices. And I already talked a little bit about the open line of communication. Which was important. Now, 
comes from the coursework of commuting and getting a car. It's going to be individualized. Sometimes students want to use their commute to read a book, study. Call from, it's just one nine one two four five three two I encourage you to maintain an open dialogue with your class team and your academic advisor. So the Belly students who are here with us virtually are in the room. Father Ben Jacola, who we're speaking to right after lunch, he is your class dean and your shepherd for all four years and a wonderful, wonderful resource. For our Fordham College and Lincoln Center students, you have, if you're if our transfer students with us, you have Dean Stark Giangiano, who is your class dean, and then first year students have Dean O'Kane as your class dean. In addition to that, you have a faculty advisor who will be reaching out to you. Please consider using those resources. We also want to emphasize thinking about all of your faculty members. They provide office help. It'll say on their syllabus which day of the week they have a specific office hour time where you can just pop by their office and ask them questions. And sometimes for every new student, regardless of their residency status, it might feel like, should I show up at that faculty member's office hours? I don't know. I have a question. Are they going to look at me? What, why don't you know that answer? Office hours are exactly where they want students to come and ask those questions. And I wished as a first year student that somebody had really emphasized that with me. I thankfully figured out as a sophomore that if I showed up at their office hours where I went to an undergrad and talked about the paper I was writing or the test I was preparing for, and I would say, this is my hypothesis for the essay I'm going to start to write, the faculty member would naturally ask me like five questions that at the time I'd be like, ooh, I don't know how to answer that, but I'd break that down and then realized oh, that is something they're going to be looking for in my essay, in my paper, or another train of thought to how, how to hone it down. And I realized that for me, and I always encourage all of our students, using those office hours are a wonderful time to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with faculty members. Prior to the pandemic, when we were all here, so many of my faculty colleagues would say, I wish more students came to my office hours. So think about your, your faculty's office hours as a resource in the leading up to assignments being due, or just stopping by to say, hello, want to get to know you a little bit more, um, get, have you get to know me a little bit more, chance to ask content questions about what they're reviewing or expectations of up upcoming assignments. As you can tell, I like Thursday activity block, so does my team that helped me prepare this presentation. I try to be here for Thursday for 1130 to be, to be extra involved. New student orientation. Monday the 9th, we have a barbecue event for all students, first year and transfer commuting students. It'd be a great chance to have, we have small groups to get to know each other. You'll meet your commuter mentor if you're a first year student, if you're a transfer student, the other upper class um, orientation leaders. We also have a chance to organize groups based on where you commute from. Our commuter mentors were in last week. They are so excited to meet all of you. They were working on their little signs for which borough, which Jersey, Westchester, Connecticut, so that you can all meet each other based on where you're commuting from. It'll be another opportunity to ask upper class student leaders, how do they navigate their commute? How do they become successful students here? So I encourage you, if you can, come, come to that. Rita, do we have a start time yet for that program? I don't believe that yet. So it's usually a later morning arrival time. We do some small groups, lunch, a couple more small groups, and it's always like a little half day lunchtime program. So I hope you can join us students. Sunday of orientation is for every new student. Resident, commuter, families are welcome on, on Sunday. We will announce to you about mid-August what is your start time for coming and checking in with orientation on Sunday. We're still working on, on those schedules. Father Machine speaks, the deans of both colleges speak. It's a wonderful festive time on campus, so please be joining us. Um, 
Our end time on that Sunday will be approximately 8 p.m. For families, it's a little, it's earlier. Families will usually end about 4 p.m. And then there's some student-only content after that on Sunday. I wanted to emphasize that because you're thinking about how you're commuting home afterwards. There is also optional social programs that we'll be working on that commuters can, can stay for if you have the ability to stay for that on Sunday. On Monday and Tuesday of orientation, the start time is going to be the same as classes. 8.30 a.m. is our start time. You might not in your schedule have an 8.30 a.m. class during the semester, but for orientation, organize your commute to be here for 8.30 a.m. for those two days. Monday is student life orientation, which is a mixture of sessions in a room all together, time with your orientation leader separated out into classrooms as well. Commuter specific sessions in the evening usually end about 7 p.m. and then we do optional outings after that. I want to emphasize that because the optional outings you get to sign up for, are, we're still working on that schedule, but they are around New York City, so you can sign up for one, and if you're going downtown and that's an easier commute home for you, you don't have to come back to campus afterwards. And you can tell your orientation leader, this is easier for me to commute home from here. So thinking about those excursions in New York City as open to all <laughs> students, and when we announce that list in August, and start doing signups, look at it correlated with your commute to see which ones might work best for you for signing up. On Tuesday, we have our academic orientation for FCLC will be together and the Belly Youth Center students will be together in, in rooms for their academic orientation. Our commuting specific sessions end around 5 p.m. And then the first year students, your mentors are gonna hopefully, they're working on a plan to encourage the commuter mentees to be together to get to know each other because not every mentee makes it to the, the barbecue and so it's another touch point to get to know the other people assigned to your same mentor and create a group dynamic there on a Tuesday evening. That's still optional but I want to emphasize that because it's another great way to get to know each other. I'm going to shift to our Q&A. I'm going to put up this screen for anybody who wants to take a photo. This is our office email address in Boston SC at Fordham.edu. The orientation email address, which is orientsc at Fordham.edu. Many of the resources I talked about are on our website, Fordham.edu slash commuterlc. And then all of the Instagrams are really important. I wanted to emphasize our office Instagram ones. Some of them, the Community Students Association the you know, first year mentors, if they're not as active right now, but as we get closer to the start of the school year, they'll be even more active. And I know orientation is active already on Instagram. Um, and then our office throughout the school year will always repost student club events and meetings. We'll also post that on our Instagram in addition to emailing that out to the first year students. I see a first hand here for questions. I want to know when we can sign up for the barbecue. Wonderful. So, did you, so the question for those at home, how do you sign up for the barbecue? Some of the orientation folks answer that. Um, we have not released sign-ups, so yes, mm -hmm. that's very important. Um, we haven't released sign-ups yet, so that information will come to you soon to try and bring that. It will be on university tickets as well. So all of you are here with me in person and virtual, you navigated university tickets. You're going to log in the same way. If you used your if you use your Fordham.edu login, if you used a personal login with your personal email, you can use that to re-log in, and we'll announce when it's live on, on university tickets, and you'll get a QR code again. Any other virtual questions? Yes, we have some questions from the chat. Uh, if one is, if our financial aid included a Metro grant, how does that work? Will we receive a Metro card? Great question. You do not receive a Metro card. That grant is taken off your bill is reduced with the hope that then you use that money to help supplement your community. So your bill is reduced. The question I got in the last session, which didn't have virtual components, but I want to, I want to emphasize this because one of the orientation leaders um, did. I had a commuting family ask, 
Does it can a commuter switch to a resident? Does that happen often? It doesn't happen that often. It can happen every year is a little bit different. You can sign up to be on the housing wait list if you wanted to be a, a resident student. You can sign up halfway through your, your first semester. You can sign up any time in your four years. If you sign up to be on the housing wait list and get offered a spot on housing, you don't keep that metro grant. And so I want to emphasize that that metro grant only stays with you while you're a commuting student. Now, some of you might be a little confused. Like, like I didn't see a metro grant. There's a certain amount of scholarship money you might have already received where the metro grant is, does not kick in. But for students who maybe didn't have quite as much scholarship money to start with, they supplemented with the metro grant to have community students come to them or in general. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I have a few more questions from the chat here. Uh, someone was wondering if there can be the dates for all the programming you mentioned sent out, and similarly, can we send out the information present on the slide? <laughs> And if not, where can they find that information in the future? I heard part of the question. <laughs> um, so the information that is in this presentation right now, we're actually recording these sessions. Um, so if you are looking for this information after, we'll be posting this session to our website. Um, so just email us for the link. We also have um, our session from our June 28th program already on our website, so you can check for that. Um, it covers the same information, just different Q and A questions. Um, so you can be sure to go there. Did I answer the entire question? Or is there another part to it? Yeah, I, the only thing I would say is I, the last presentation that's already up on the website doesn't have the slide. I realized we didn't. My team did not put that slide in, and I thought this was a really helpful slide. So I'm going back to it for any virtual or in-person folks who want to take a screenshot of it now. This will be on the recording from today that we will post. It would probably take us until next week. To get the transcription on the bottom and post it on our our YouTube channel, so want to make sure you have that. This information as well, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Once we have all these times finalized, you're going to get a long email from orientation that's going to outline some of this. So I'm not expecting you to remember this on August 29th. This is a stopgap so that you can start to think about your schedule so that when we announce this a week or two before orientation, that's not the first time you're hearing that we have evening optional social program. Many of our community students appreciate knowing that earlier. I will also um, ask us to emphasize that at the barbecue uh, and other opportunities so that community students who came last week or didn't emphasize this as much would start to hear this, this news as well. Thank you for that feedback. Do I have any in-person questions? And I'll switch back to virtual. Yes. All right, uh, so I'm on the housing wait list. Okay. And I don't know what you but in your experience, how would you manage that being kind of your Jewish student at the moment, mm -hmm. but also encounter something that might happen in the next okay. So for those of us who are virtual, the question is the student here is on the housing wait list and is asking for advice how to navigate that. I would fully jump in as a community student. Come to the barbecue, meet your mentor, get to know what campus life is like as a community student, because I don't know when you're going to get off that housing wait list. You, it might not be until after the start of classes. It might not be until the spring semester. And so I would embrace being a commuting student so that you start off as strong as possible. And then if you get offered housing, when you get offered housing at some point, then you pivot there. So orientation, um, Dan Patterson, who was in it, do we all come in with Natalie as well? Yes. So Dan Patterson is my associate director. He also as supervisors who will commute to first year mentors. So residential life will let us know when there's a first year student on the housing wait list, if they get accepted, and then we let the mentor know. Sometimes there's a little gap, so you're welcome just to email back your, your commuter mentor and say, uh, I have this other offer, and then you'll get a resident mentor. Right. That'll be your next Thanks. person. Does that help answer? Yeah. Weird question, but are we gonna? No question is a weird question. Are we no question is too small of a question. Are we gonna have three batch at the orientation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question for the virtual folks: meals at orientation. Yes, great. Thank you for saying that. Um, Sunday we have dinner. 
with your so Sunday, we have receptions that are happening. It's not specifically a lunch. So community students come to campus, their families are welcome to join us. We have a variety of receptions. We're still working on how to organize that because some of the things we did pre-pandemic, we have to shift a little bit. So there will be opportunities for more snacks in the afternoon. Then for the students, we do do offer dinner on Sunday night. And that is you get your dinner and then you usually have your dinner with your orientation leader and other people in your group to get to know your orientation group. So from a commuting perspective, you get to know your first year mentor, commuting mentor group, you get to know your orientation group. We should have this organized that you get to know a variety of people during your time here to help set you off to your first year classes going, going really well. On Monday and Monday, we offer lunch and dinner as part of orientation. On Tuesday, lunch is part of orientation. And then that evening commuter first year event is usually with food. So we're still working on that. So hopefully you'll stay for that and then you get the food dinner too. For the transfer students virtually, our transfer student here, are you your belly or FCLC? FCLC. So for Belly transfer students, in case I have anybody who's virtual, yeah, you come with the for Belly first year students because we have so few for Belly transfer students, so you spend the day together. FCLC is still working on their schedule. Usually, it's a hybrid of transfer students with the first year students and transfer students separately, which sometimes means you end a little bit earlier. But we don't have their schedule yet for Tuesday, and we'll get that and. Instructor and John will announce that as well. So your end time might be a little bit different if you're a transfer student versus a transfer center on Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, and Sunday. Is there an option for commuters to get parking? Parking question. We have no parking garage here. That's an option. We do. So you can drive to campus. There's a variety of garages in the in the area. You get their little ticket, and then you come to the front desk of Lumenstein on 60th and Columbus, and they can stamp your ticket. So that when you go back to pick up your car, you get a discount off the daily fee. Sometimes our community students will know that they have an evening event, might choose to drive in on a day-to-day -day basis. I think many of our community students navigate public transportation because it's more economical that way. If you don't, some of the garages nearby offer monthly parking. They're, they don't discount that though, the whole thing. Okay. So anybody, really. So um, something to think about for, for parking nearby. I'll go back to you for a virtual question. Can we go back to the mic? I'm sorry, I'm worried that I have more virtual things. Okay, I have more virtual do I see a hand coming that way? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to make sure I get a slide when it comes to the actual part. Mm -hmm. So, is it something I do apply? Do I apply for it? Or is it included in the scholarship? So, just want to make sure I get a slide. Yeah, I do understand. So, the question was going back to the Metro grant and how that happens. That happens yeah, all the Metro grant comes automatically from financial aid. So when you look at your, your financial package that you would have gotten from financial aid, it would list whether you have a Metro grant. If you do not have a Metro grant already listed, you can contact the Office of Financial Aid and inquire. That generally means that you were given other scholarship money that was higher than the Metro grant, but if you're in individual circumstance where that wasn't the case, and you don't have that Metro grant already listed on your tuition bill, contact financial aid to inquire. Okay, so there is also going to be a representative for the families here. There's a representative at the uh, admissions panel, excuse me, administrator panel. Oh, wrong word. The administrator panel for families. So my virtual families can also ask questions, and you could submit that question to, to them as well. And then I know some families here, they're on the second floor of Lawrence. And another family this morning who went over first to ask them questions before we started today. So you can go to the second floor of Lawrence during lunch. 
or at the end of your, your day here, though it might be a little tight from the time it closed and, and show up in person as well. If you need to miss a session today to walk over, feel free to do that. I, um, but I want to give you options. I just want to be sure it's a measure grant or if like you're commuting from home or anywhere in the city. So if you're commuting from your, your permanent address from home, that could be another nuance. Sometimes a student will uh, not be commuting from their family home and then they, they're not eligible. They, they opt into being a commuting student, which is different than commuting from where you grew up. But if so we're on the housing waiting list and you didn't have a choice of not being a commuter? Oh, yes. So how would that? I would, I don't wanna give you incorrect. So the question, next question I have, let me just say for the virtual folks, another student in the room who is looking into switching for housing, how does the Metro grant work? We really do refer you to financial aid and maybe go up to the second floor of Rollins team um, during the lunch time to ask some of those questions, but I don't wanna give you Incorrect information. Yes. And so for the virtual folks at home, they also have an office number, which I don't know off the top of my head. But as you, for all of enrollment, you call, you tell them what you're looking for, and then they help set you up with the correct person to get answer your questions. So that is also available to you. I just realize I'm emphasizing in person, um, but the families who are virtual, you can also ask your questions at the administrator. Two-part question. Um, are you aware when the student freshmen start taking their classes and schedules? And then the second part of the question is: Do the freshmen have a core, uh, core group of classes that they're all taking? So their selection of when they're going to be commuting is more limited, or the students can pick their own times and days of the week that they're going to be commuting. So the question is about registering and how, how the, it's a more limited if you're a commuting student. Am I summarizing that correctly? Yeah, and also our freshman students, they have core classes that they all are taking, so their time, they, they have less flexibility to pick. What and are their core in. classes, yes. Some of that new ones depends on which college you're in. So, when, okay, for one call. But if you're virtual families at home, will also have, have that question. So I'll start with Gabelli. Gabelli Lincoln Center students do have some classes that are all together. That's why Father Vin registers them. You have the ground floor class on Wednesday at 2.30. That is all together. <coughs> Usually you're in McNally and then you split up into the different faculty groups. And so that Gabelli school does have some classes that are all first years at one class um, for their curriculum. Fordham College at Lincoln Center has core classes. When you take those core classes, it depends on your schedule of do you have um, advanced placement credits, what, what is still open. So the core curriculum in Fordham College at Lincoln Center students get recommendations of what to take their first semester, but have some flexibility. So there isn't like a one class that everybody has to be at or a one time everybody needs to be at. My understanding is that information on how to register already went out for Fordham College of Lincoln Center students. So if you have not registered yet or do not have that information, your session later today after lunch with the representatives from Fordham College of Lincoln Center is going to be the perfect place to ask those questions. Same for my virtual folks at home. After the lunch break, Father Vin Dicola will be here in this room talking with all the Gabelli students virtual and in person and answer questions and then the virtual folks at home will be joining the families and, and students in person at McNally Amphitheater and there'll be representatives that can answer some of those questions. I, the one other nuance I would say is that first year students are not eligible to take evening classes. So we have classes that start at 6 p.m. that go until 8.45. That is for upper class students. Those, those classes are primarily for our professional and continuing study students, but they're generally non-traditional age undergrads who are working full-time elsewhere, come to campus every night at six. So your first year, your last class would be 4 p.m. That ends at 5.15. In your upper class years, you can opt in to evening classes. Any other virtual questions? 
will keep on helping you to go back to the slide with the orientation page. Oh, yes. And could you just remind everyone additional resources of where they can find the space for future reference? Sure. Rita? Um, the dates are on our website. If you go to Fordham.edu um, and navigate to the new student orientation page, you'll be able to find um, these dates listed on there. And of course, if there are any questions about you know the schedule of the program, then you can of course email us at orientslc at Fordham.edu. So on our website, it's not going to have the nuances of the start and end times for commuting commuting students yet. As we get closer and, and those are even more finalized with your end times, we will put that up on our website. You can go to fordham.edu slash orient lc is the short name to get right to the orientation website. Well, thank you everybody for being here with me. I'll stay here at the end for any individual questions, any of our virtual participants or orientation leaders will be around to answer some questions for you on chat. I really appreciate having you today. Thank you. Thank you.